Good afternoon, greetings from Amsterdam. It's lovely to see that you joined us today for this webinar about our bachelor's in uh, communication science at the University of Amsterdam. Great to see that you're interested and uh, I hope you'll uh, learn a lot from this webinar. Uh, and it's lovely to see that you're uh, coming from all kinds of places in the world uh, to join us. And I'm curious actually where you're, uh, where you're at this moment. So uh, please, could you type the country uh, where you're at this moment? So. Uh, I think it's uh, nice to see where you're all from. Um, my name is uh, Sarah de Jong and I am uh, a study advisor for our bachelor's program in communication science. Standing next to me is my colleague Sophie Boerman. She is assistant professor in communication science uh, specializing in persuasive communication and later this session also one of our students Alex will join us uh, to share his, uh, his experience as a student in our program. So, well, I see a lot, uh, lots of different countries uh, listed there. Uh, a Mexican, Mexican right now in Hungary, Luxembourg, Poland, Hong Kong, an American in Malaysia, Prague, Luxembourg, Germany, Monaco, Lithuania. Yes, yeah, so really all around the world. Great to see. Nice that you've uh, joined us. Uh, welcome all, or as we say in Dutch, hartelijk uh, welkom allemaal. Um, I can imagine this format of a webinar is uh, maybe new to you, so uh, I'll explain briefly how it works. Of course, you listen to us, to our presentation, what we have to say about the, the program, and you have the opportunity to ask questions to us. So uh, use the live function, the chat function, to ask all the questions that you have for us. I will try to answer them. I have some colleagues uh, behind the scenes that will uh, answer your questions, and as well, we'll uh, address some of your questions if they're relevant for all uh, all participants. Um, this session is about an hour and uh, you will receive a lot of information, so it's a lot to process. Um, therefore, we'll make sure that afterwards you'll receive an email with a link to uh, the, the online webinar, so you could re-watch it if necessary. And also we send you a short summary with the most important matters, most important websites to refer to. Um, so yeah, just to be, be sure that uh, you can uh, well, process all the information in your own time as well. Um, the session, uh, when the session ends, the, the chat function will be open for a couple of minutes afterwards. So please ask your last questions then. If you're not able to address, uh, to answer all of your questions uh, before the, the chat function closes, we'll uh, make sure that we answer, uh, that we send the answers through email afterwards to you personally. Um, during the session, I often refer to the website as well. A lot of the information that we are discussing today, you can find on our website. Uh, maybe you have taken a look on our website before. It looks like this. Uh, so in the top menu, you find all general matters about studying here at the University of Amsterdam in Amsterdam. Uh, and as well, um, in the left menu, you find, find more specific program information about bachelors in communication science. So I'll refer several times to this website. Uh, to make sure that you find your way there as well. The program for today, well, first we'll try to answer the question for you, what is communication science? Uh, Sophie Boerman will tell you all about that. And uh, then I'll continue uh, to explain the, the structure of our bachelor's program. So what courses will you actually be taking when studying here? Uh, I will invite Alex, our student in the second year, to explain, uh, will tell you all about his experience as a student here in our program. And uh, also I'll address some of the pra practical matters that, need to, that, well, that you um, need to arrange, need to be aware of, such as the application process, uh, housing and so on. Uh, practical matters that you need to uh, be aware of when you want to become a student here in our university. And before closing, I will uh, address some of the prospects after graduation in our program. So let's move on to, uh, well, the most important question, what is communication science? Sophie, could you tell us about that? Yes, I will try. So um, uh, first of all, hello to everyone. Uh, my name is uh, Sophie Boerman, like uh, Sarah just told you, and I'm an assistant professor in uh, persuasive communication, which means that I teach um, uh, almost half of my time in a bachelor and in a master. And I also do some research, academic research into persuasive communication. 
And um, communication science is a social science that uh, is about all different uh, aspects of communication. And I think all of you are aware that we are com communicating 24 seven. So now you're uh, in a webinar or online watching us, uh, but you're also, uh, uh, people are using their mobile phones, social media, watching television, uh, but communication can also be interpersonal, talking to people. And all of these communication uh, processes uh, are um, uh, studied and, uh, and uh, talked about in communication science. And what we focus on is the content. So what uh, communication is, uh, uh, what messages are communi communicated, um, the uses of communication. So how do people use um, uh, different types of entertainment or, or, uh, or messages? And what are the effects? So uh, how, do, how does communication affect our, our behavior, our decisions, our attitudes? Uh, that is all um, uh, studied in communication science. And I think one way of, um, oh, doesn't work, no. Uh, and one way of, uh, so what I just said is uh, that we study the content, the applications, and the uh, consequence of media and communication. And one way of looking at communication science is by this model, which is developed by Laswell, which is a very important, uh, uh, one of the first communication science uh, scientists out there. And what he says is that uh, communication involves different aspects, um, starting with the communicator, the sender, uh, who sends a message, um, uh, what does that person say? What is the message? In which channel? What medium is used? Uh, to whom? Who is the receiver? Who is the audience? And with what effect? The effect. And all of these aspects are studied in communication science. And you can imagine that you are part of this, this, uh, this model um, in, in your daily life. For instance, you can be a voter and then you use uh, information sent by different uh, uh, sources um, to, you, uh, to make a decision on who to vote for. But also you're a consumer, you're uh, buying uh, products based on the advertising that you saw. Um, you can be a gamer, like to uh, use uh, entertainment communication, uh, or you can be uh, an employee in a, in a company. And then you want to know um, uh, what happens in your company and internal communication is very important. And all of these aspects um, uh, in this model are then can explain uh, uh, how we uh, process and use and uh, what are the effects of communication. So in communication science, in the bachelor, we, um, we discuss, we have different tracks, four different tracks. And one of them is political communication and journalism. And in this track, we focus on um, how uh, mass media and how journalists and um, uh, news can uh, influence uh, voters, um, how they can uh, uh, influence our decisions but also what the role is of journalism, of news, of social media in a, de in a de democracy. And this is very important because now we know that social media has become much more important in, uh, in voter uh, decisions. You can uh, think of Trump. Um, uh, people say that he, he won the elections because of uh, his social media use and because of his social media campaigning. But on the other hand, it's really interesting that uh, the, the traditional news didn't uh, predict this, this win. So there was a very uh, uh, but, um, a big disbalance between the traditional media and social media. And this is something that is discussed in the political communication and journalism track. Another track that we have is corporate communication, and this involves uh, all stakeholders in uh, companies. This involves external and internal communication. So you can think of external communication in a sense that uh, um, companies uh, communicate with the media in public relations. They communicate with governments, with uh, other stakeholders. And um, uh, for instance, one very interesting uh, aspect that is studied in cor corporate communication is how a company should handle a crisis. You can imagine that when uh, a negative video about your company uh, goes viral and people start to uh, uh, complain about your company and how they and how your employees uh, uh, solved a different uh, a specific crisis, um, that you want to know how to respond to this? How do you respond to, to negative messages when a video goes viral? Well, there are many different strategies, and those strategies are, for instance, uh, discussed in corporate communication. 
Um, that's external communication, but uh, internal communication is also a very uh, important part of uh, corporate communication because um, also as a, as a company, you as a manager, you want to communicate to your employees, um, uh, for instance, changes in your company or what happens in your company. And this is also discussed in corporate communication. Another track uh, in uh, the Bachelor of Communication Science is persuasive communication. And persuasive communication involves all messages that are trying to persuade you of something, trying to uh, convince you of something. Um, and this can be um, health communication. Um, uh, lots of different messages try to uh, make people uh, behave uh, healthily. Um, uh, stop smoking, uh, stop drinking alcohol, start exercising, for instance. So what messages are more persuasive? Uh, what channels are more persuasive? Should we do that online or offline or uh, personalize that information or not? That is all studied uh, with regard to persuasive communication in the health context but it's also focusing on marketing communication. So um, one way of looking at that is how, what messages, what advertisements, what commercials are more, more uh, persuasive, what music should we, should we use, what, what uh, slogan do, should we use, uh, should we um, uh, make people laugh or cry, um, all different strategies to persuade people. Uh, but also it's not only about making ads more persuasive and more effective, uh, making people buy stuff, but we also want to make sure that uh, people can make their own decisions and, uh, and are empowered to, uh, to know uh, what to do when, um, when, uh, when they're uh, exposed to an ad or a persuasive message. So that's persuasive communication. And then the last track is entertainment communication which involves uh, the use of entertainment. Um, why do people uh, watch soap operas? Why do people uh, play video games? Uh, and what effects do these uh, entertainment, uh, communi does this entertainment communication have? You can, for instance, think of um, video game addict addictions and how this may, uh, may make people more aggressive. Um, or not, um, but it also studies, for instance, the effects of fit girls on social media, all those girls that are uh, working out a lot and show off their bodies. Does this motivate people to go and exercise or does it make people think less of themselves and, uh, and have a, a, a more negative body image? These are all things that are discussed in entertainment communication. So as you can see, there are less, lots of different variations of communication science, but it's all about the content, the, the use and the effects of communication in different fields. And in the bachelor, um, you will um, get, uh, you will be taught about all of these different tracks. So all tracks will be um, uh, in your courses and uh, you will be taught about all of them, next to obviously academic skills and, uh, and other things. Um, so this is uh, the tracks and communication science. And now the question remains, why should you study communication science at the UVA? Why should you go to Amsterdam to do that? Um, <laughs> and I think I can, I can give you some reasons and Sarah can also give you some reasons. Mm -hmm. But one of the most important things I think is that communication science at the uh, University of Amsterdam is, uh, is ranked very highly, very good at, uh, at uh, um, international rankings. So uh, they scored second in the QS world ranking, I think, first in, uh, in Europe. Um, but also, um, like I said, I as an as a assistant professor, I teach, but I also do research. And uh, most of our uh, courses are very research-based. Um, um, uh, you cannot teach without uh, using academic research for that. And there's a very close link between um, uh, the bachelor and the Amsterdam School of Communication Research that uh, um, uh, performs all the, the, the studies. So I think that's a very good thing because um, uh, you will not only be taught about the research, but you can also talk to the people that actually do that research. Um, and I think, um, so like I say, most of these top researchers work as lecturers, so you can have a very close link uh, with the people that you're actually uh, reading articles of. 
Um, and we have a very international staff, very international students as well, but the staff is also very international. We have people from Germany, from America, from Korea, from, uh, um, I don't know, all the <laughs> countries that people are from. Many, more. many, yes. many more. So that's also very interesting because people have different perspectives on things and uh, it makes it very um, uh, nice to work at, but also to study as a student. So Sarah, maybe you can add something to that? <laughs> yes, sure I can. Uh, thank you. Um, well, for sure, uh, I believe that uh, in our program you get a broad range of subjects within the field of communication science. So as Sophie already explained, we uh, distinguish four different domains within the communication science, so the corporate, the entertainment, political and persuasive communication. And you'll uh, get courses in each of these four domains. So for sure, uh, you'll get a broad education within the communication science, and if and also if you have uh, if you have a specific interest in one or two of these domains, you also can uh, make sure that uh, in uh, other components of the program you focus on those uh, if, yeah on those fields within the communication science. And in addition to that, you also have uh, broad opportunities to personalize your program within the bachelor's. So, for instance, you need to fill up an elective space, so that's a full semester in which you can choose yourself what courses you wish to take, and that could be all kinds of disciplines. Uh, and as well, we have a mandatory internship as, as part of the program because we we think it's very important that um, well you also get experience in the practice of uh, communication science. You can put the theories and what you've learned, the skills that you've learned, into practice. Um, so uh, later on, I'll tell you a bit more about how you can personalize your your program during the bachelor's. Um, and well, lastly, but not least, Amsterdam is a great city to live in. I can definitely confirm, and uh, I think my colleague and uh, later on Alex is uh, our student as well. Um, besides that, our program is highly ranked. Uh, Amsterdam is also highly ranked as a safe and enjoyable city, uh, uh, good comfort of living here. So uh, I think that's also important. And as well, um, well, Amsterdam is uh, well, a hub of media and culture. There are lots of companies who, who have a media, big media presence uh, located here in Amsterdam. So you can imagine that it might be interested, interesting to study communication science uh, here in Amsterdam. Before uh, I continue to the next subject, I am curious whether there are some questions so far about the, well, the subject of communication science and reasons to study here at the UVA. Not yet. If you have any questions, feel free to ask them through the chat and we'll uh, refer to them uh, later on. So for now, thank you, Sophie. No problem. <laughs> thank you for your contribution. And I will briefly explain uh, what the rest of the program will look like. So um, soon I will tell you all about the structure of a bachelor's program. So what courses will you be taking? Uh, but as well, uh, I'll refer to some practical matters. So what you need you need to prepare in order to apply for our program and as well what you need to prepare in order to enroll in our program so practical matters such as uh, housing for instance so uh, in the meantime um, one of our students alex has joined us welcome alex hey, thank, thank you very you much for joining us thank could you, you uh, briefly introduce yourself and explain to us why you chose to study communication science with us absolutely uh, i'm alex i'm from germany uh, i'm currently in my second year of the study program and i'm right now enrolled in uh, the minor of entrepreneurship. So this is the elective phase right now. And um, prior to the study, I got some work experience uh, in, a, in a music company. And uh, I was getting really, really interested about um, internal communication. And I wanted to pursue that, um, yeah, academically. OK, yeah. great. Thank you for sharing. Uh, I'll, soon I'll get back to you with lots more uh, questions about well, how you experience studying here in our program. And as well, of course, you have the opportunity to ask uh, uh, questions to Alex as well. Um, so I will move on to well, our bachelor's program. So what would it look like if you, uh, if you are an actual student in our program? What courses will you be taking? This is our bachelor's program. Uh, our bachelor's program takes three full years, so each pillar that you can see in this slide is one year in our program. Um, and every year is again divided into a semester, so in each semester in our program uh, lasts 20 weeks. And again that semester is divided into blocks, so usually you take two courses next to each other in the first two blocks, which uh, each take uh, up to eight weeks, and in the third block you take a full-time course which lasts for uh, four weeks. Um, we work with EZTS credits, so that means that every year you can obtain 60 EZTS credits. So in the end, after the 
three full years in our program, you have obtained 180 ECTS credits and you'll receive your bachelor's degree, your Bachelor of Science. Um, we have some important entry requirements within our program. Of course, you enter our program. Um, that's the first, uh, uh, entry the first entry requirement to cover. But uh, when you start your program uh, in the first year, we have uh, the requirement that you have obtained 48 credits uh, in order to uh, continue with the second year. So that means if you obtain less than 48 credits, you're not allowed to well to continue in our second year of, uh, in the second year of the program. So important to mention. Uh, also, later in our program, you, uh, you, there will be some entry requirements. So, for instance, you can see uh, the graduation project in the third year. Um, in order to start that, you need to have completed all first uh, the, all the courses in the first uh, three semesters. So, you need to be at least halfway through our program. Um, in the on the left side, next to the first year of our program, the uh, gray uh, vertical pillar. Uh, says academic skills tutoring. That's also one of the courses that we offer to our first year students. Um, during uh, the first semester, the, well, the first week that you start in our program, you'll be assigned a tutorial group and as well a mentor, a tutor that's there for you to, well, to guide you through that first year. Uh, and during the classes that you have for this course, uh, you'll uh, learn about uh, academic study, study skills. So think of pre uh, pre presenting skills, academic writing skills, um, but also, uh, for instance, planning. Um, and we'll share with you also information about well, the rest of the program, the choices you need to make within the program. Uh, we'll guide you through uh, that process as well. Uh, we focus, for instance, as well on career orientation, that kind of subjects. Um, you might have noticed that that uh, the courses have a different colors in this uh, in this overview. Uh, we have yellow courses, and these courses focus mainly on the theories within communication science. So, of course, you start off with a course introducing you to the main theories in communication science, and then again you continue with. Um, uh, well, of course, in each of the four domains that my colleague already addressed, so corporate communication, entertainment communication, political communication, and uh, persuasive communication. So you cover each of these subjects. And as well, you see a big part of the, well, the first half of the program, of course, is listed there are blue or, or purple. Not sure. <laughs> um, and these courses uh, uh, focus on statistics methods, uh, so research skills that you need to have uh, need to obtain in order to do research within the field of communication science. Uh, so yeah, that's quite a uh, makes up takes up quite a big part of our program. So yes, we are a very much research oriented program, and you'll learn uh, yeah what makes a good research, and also you need to, you will learn how to conduct your research yourself. Um, so well, Alex. You're now halfway through our program mm -hmm. in your second year, just started in the second semester. Exactly. How have you experienced these first three semesters in our program and the courses you uh, uh, took there? Well, they were very intense. It was very intense three semesters, but very rewarding as well, because mm -hmm. it was, um, I, I like the structure of having two courses at the same time and getting really into the subject matter at hand. Um, especially also showing and looking into domains like political communication, which I would have not naturally came up with it with mm -hmm. choosing as a course. But uh, this was also something I it took a lot away from. I really liked that course as well. Um, so it's been it's been really good. And mm -hmm. in the research workshops, you really get to design your own survey and conduct your actual analysis and um, sort of emulates a, a real research report, which is really fun uh, mm -hmm. to do to, to not only get the theory and but also just really practicing it. So okay. yeah, it's been it's been great three semesters. Okay, yeah. and. Uh, well, the, the the research courses, as you can see, are take up quite a big part of the program. How have you experienced the statistics and the methods? Uh, well, as part of the of the program. Well, it was uh, of course it was challenging. Um, I, I come from a music background, so for me it was also an extra step maybe because uh, it's been a while since uh, since I had to use the the left side of my brain. But uh, I, it's really <laughs> accessible, and um, if you work on it and um, if you practice it, especially, then I don't see a problem there. Everyone who's engaged and is willing to work. And is, is definitely going to manage the courses. Plus, you will get to learn to how to really apply them as well in the research workshops, which is uh, which is great. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and what what course that you uh, thought was most challenging uh, so far? 
so or most surprising mm -hmm. to you? Well, I would say statistics too was very challenging, but mm -hmm. um, st but on the upside, it was great because it was a flipped classroom setting, so that you get to um, you get to really actually practice and have a lecturer in front of you and talk to him and, and solve problems together, um, and that gives you enough opportunities um, to practice just the statistics, and then it's really really accessible, I think. So, so you passed. I passed it. Yes, <laughs> That's great. Thank, thank God. Yeah. <laughs> um, and uh, what, what course did you enjoy the most so far? I enjoyed the most uh, corporate communication, mm -hmm. um, just because coming from a uh, from a setting where I was um, working in a big company where a lot of communication would have to happen internationally. Mm -hmm. um, I, I, I walked into this course with focusing on that domain. So I think corporate communication uh, is the, the master's track for me. Okay. Um, so, yeah. Yeah, so that's the one you enjoyed the most so far. Exactly, yeah. But all the other courses of, of the four domains were really enjoyable. And it's out of every course, you could take something away. And uh, really also in persuasive communication, you can see the marketing um, strategies that are applied all around you, which is very, very interesting. Mm -hmm. um, so that was also really fun. Okay, so, yeah. great to hear that you enjoyed so far uh, studying in our program. Um, well, as you can see in the in the overview of our program, a lot of the courses are also well gray, uh, and that has a meaning as well. Uh, that's actually the part which you can personalize. So the first half of the program that's fixed, and you take all of these courses in that order, uh, all together with the other students in our program. Uh, but after that, you have some choices to make. So uh, there are several ways in which you personalize your program. So the first one is uh, that you. Um, will need to fill up one of the semester with electives or, or maybe a minor program, so a, a small but substantial a program uh, in, a, in another discipline. Um, so as you can see here, you have during the second semester of the second year the opportunity to take electives and well to, uh, to get acquainted with another discipline than that of communication science. Uh, so Alex, well, you just char started that part of the program. Could you tell us some more about well, what you're doing now, uh, what you've chose for your elective space? Absolutely. Uh, I'm doing a minor in entrepreneurship now, mm -hmm. um, which is um, a very hands-on course, which is fun to do after three semesters of um, theoretical and research-based uh, work. Um, I got really lucky and I got a good group. Um, and so this is basically um, all the courses were already set for us, so we didn't have to choose from other domains really courses, but you applied for the minor, and this is what, I, what I'll do for, for this semester now. Mm -hmm. um, and then long-term planning-wise, I'm gonna switch around my graduation project and the internship. Um, yeah, this is something that you can easily do during that part of the study. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and so far it's it's good. I can't really, uh, I haven't experienced maybe yet downsides from, from the course, but it's, uh, yeah, yeah, it's gonna be, it's pretty good so far. Yeah, looking yeah. forward to what's to come still. Exactly, yeah, okay. definitely. Um, well, of course, uh, that's uh, one way to fill up your elective space. So Alex has taken a minor in entrepreneurship, mm -hmm. so learning how to become an entrepreneur there. Exactly. Um, but there are also, of course, many other options to choose from. So, for instance, you could uh, choose to do a minor in uh, political science, if that interests you, or uh, maybe in sociology or uh, in uh, digital media. Uh, but also maybe you have a broader interest and you want to take courses, elective courses from several disciplines and add that, those to your elective space. That might be an option as well. So it's up to you how you fill up that semester. And it's really interesting, uh, just a, in addition to that, to mm -hmm. In, for long-term planning to check out which courses are offered when or which minor is offered when because not all courses will be offered at the same time um, just as an addition yeah to keep in mind and exactly so it's good to orientate towards that in an early stage because it might be possible that you can adjust our well the the main planning that we offer here and make sure that you can well uh, tailor your program according to your own wishes and plan the courses that you wish to take uh, somewhere in the three years that you're with us Okay, uh, well, and another option to uh, personalize your program is the internship. We offer that as a mandatory part uh, in our program. Um, so um, that's quite a, a special thing for a bachelor's program, or at least ac academic bachelor's program in the Netherlands. It's often not a mandatory part, but here it, it, it is in our program because we do value that our students get uh, the practical experience as well. So they put their skills and, and knowledge into practice during that semester. 
And uh, well, I do see there is a question about the internship as well, so that's good timing. Uh, yeah, Isis or Isis is asking us uh, what are the types of internships that people take on in the third year. Um, well, they could be in all kinds of fields because it's up to you in what kind of domain you wish to do that. So if you're interested in corporate communication, maybe you could um, uh, do the internship in the communication department of a bigger company that you think uh, is interesting or maybe uh, you're interested in, in politics and you're able to uh, uh, well uh, be a news editor um, well, covering uh, political issues um, and, and get your experience there um, and Alex do you know of students who are doing their internship or already have concrete plans about where they want to do their internship well there uh, I've heard from a couple of students of mine actually that are um, that are looking abroad for internships um, I don't, none of my friends actually has is doing one right now, so I can't mm -hmm. really say. But I know that a lot of people are looking at into big firms, but also smaller companies. So mm -hmm. it's everything between media companies, uh, NGOs, um, yeah, or advertising firms. So really, the scope is just really how how you know how you like to do it. So, yeah, yeah, exactly. And you have a lot of freedom to choose your own internship position, so you can really follow your own interests and your your wishes within. Yeah in that aspect of the studies. Yep. Uh, I see a question as well from Christina. You ha uh, can the internship be outside of Amsterdam? Yes, that can be possible as well. So maybe you find an internship uh, well somewhere else in the Netherlands or even outside of the Netherlands. Uh, you do have the option to do the, well, the internship at any place in the world. So indeed, you have that opportunity to go uh, beyond the scopes of Amsterdam. Um, Besides, uh, well, electives, internship, uh, we also have the graduation project as part of our program. And that's, the, well, the final thing that you can do in our uh, bachelor's or maybe as a uh, almost final semester, you can switch Switchable, the semesters yeah. around in the third year as well. Uh, and in the graduation project, uh, you write your thesis and you can choose uh, yourselves and what, what domain you wish to do your graduation project. So let's say you like Alex, you've been inspired by corporate communication, uh, you could choose to do your graduation project within that direction. So that's another way to personalize your program. Uh, also, we offer topics in communication science. So you see as well in, your, in the third year CS topics, so communication science topics. Those are uh, actually electives within the field of communication science. And we, uh, well, we oblige you to take two in the program, so to include two in the program, but we offer many different um, topics. So uh, let's say this semester we offer a topic in international communication or uh, social media and organizations, health communication. So those are more specific fields that you could study uh, uh, in these topics and you choose yourselves which ones you want to include in your program. Um, and also, well, we already mentioned going abroad for the internship, but uh, of course you could go abroad as well for your electives. Uh, that means that you, well, skip your uh, switched program around a bit uh, and you go abroad in your third year uh, for a semester. And uh, uh, while you're abroad, you uh, fill up your elective space at a university uh, somewhere else in the world. And Amsterdam, uh, University of Amsterdam has a lot of partners in Europe, outside of Europe to choose from, uh, to go to. And lots of our students also do uh, participate in these kind of exchange programs in their uh, third year. Um, so that might be worthwhile to take a look uh, at as well. And afterwards, when we send you some information, we also refer you to the website where you can find more information about uh, studying abroad semesters, exchange semesters and so on. So just take a look as well what destinations you can choose from. All right. Well, let's move on to well the, the first week of a student in our program. So maybe that's you in, uh, in a couple of months. Uh, and this could be an example of your week's weekly schedule for the first weeks, months of, uh, of the studies. Um, well, it's not only an example. I think it was your actual schedule, actual exactly. schedule for the first week. Exactly, Alex. that was it. <laughs> <laughs> Could you uh, explain the schedule a bit? Or yeah. What did it look like for Absolutely. you? Absolutely. So um, we in the first semester, you technically have three courses. You have uh, MCRS, which is divided up into two types of um, teaching styles that you'll get exposed to. It's the lectures um, in a big classroom. 
um, and we had tutorials where with where you work with a smaller group with the tutorial teacher are more interactive and solve um, assignments and, and group projects and, and if anything related to that. Then I, I also had ICS, which had the same system and we had one once a week, I think it was always uh, academic, academic skills tutoring. So on the outside, the, the schedule does not um, appear to look very full, but it fills up very fast um, just because of weekly readings, uh, weekly assignments. You have to really start to get organized to know when to do what because you have nobody like in school basically um, who's going to help you or who's going to sit behind you and be like, oh, you have to do this, you have to do this, but you have to be really self-organized and make sure that it's working. Mm -hmm. um, so, for example, if you look on the Monday, um, you, I had a multiple hour break and that was always a great time to, because I, I made it already out of bed, so I could, you know, start working now. Hmm. Um, so in these three hours, I could easily do the readings for, let's say, the Tuesday or something, or meet up with a group um, in Dubruch and, and work on something together. So these, these times are always really, really valuable to, to get some work done, uh, get maybe organized or sit down in a cafe and plan yeah, the, the, the future weeks. So okay. it, it estimates roughly about a 40-hour work week in total with the readings, with class and um, preparation time. So, yeah. Indeed, yeah. And as you see on the screen, it's about 14 hours of contact hours uh, that you can count on, I think, a week, so mm -hmm. on average. So indeed, it uh, does also ask a lot of self-study from you because, uh, well, we do expect that you're a full-time student and can, uh, well, use these hours that you're off right. <laughs> for self-study, of exactly. course. Exactly, yeah. yeah. Okay, and uh, well, I see as well uh, tutorials and lectures listed in uh, your schedule. Could, mm -hmm. you, could you explain a bit the difference between uh, those different types of classes? Absolutely. Um, we had a we had um, the lectures were basically uh, classrooms with yeah with la literally everyone uh, in the in the course, and you had a, you had you're in rooms with 200 people, two multiple people, where the researcher, the professor are. Uh, explaining something and um, this is more of a time which is really passive um, where you're just you're not interacting with someone but rather listening what um, yeah what the lecture is right now about mm -hmm. and the tutorials are more engaging and interactive where you actually have where you participate in class and you get the chance to find out whether you understood the material correctly um, uh, yeah and they were always fun so okay. yeah more practical and what's the number of students for a class or a lecture um, so wait one second we have a question right here okay <laughs> time for social life oh yeah we do okay before we moving on <laughs> <laughs> important question to cover <laughs> with a busy schedule like that do you have time for a social life i do i definitely did have time for social life so there's uh, there's always time to go after class to have some beers with friends or also on the weekends um i mean of course the um, um the, the exam times are always busy but mm -hmm. um but it's it's definitely there's always time to to do fun stuff as well for hobbies i wouldn't recommend maybe starting participating in the job in the beginning just to see how everyone because everyone mm -hmm. copes differently and everyone needs maybe more like people need more time to to study or less time and just figuring out that university is basically covered and from then on after in the second semester you can easily deviate and maybe get a job but, but then you know what the workload is and what is expected of you so yeah. Yeah, I think wise to just start focus on study and exactly. afterwards, yeah. after a while, uh, estimate whether you have time for other things to to do next. Absolutely, to but the time time is there. So yeah, okay, well that's good to hear. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, and uh, yeah, my, my last question was actually how many uh, students do you have for uh, in a tutorial class, a classroom setting, for instance? In a tutorial classroom setting, you'd have up to 25 uh, students usually, which mm -hmm. is, yeah, which is like a classroom setting. Uh, it's also a sm way smaller room, obviously, than a lecture hall. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and yeah, so those were always, uh, yeah, very interesting because that, that way you get practical experience in... Uh, trying to implement the theories usually, which is really, mm -hmm. really good. Or you practice your writing or you practice on SPSS a bit, um, the statistical program. So, yeah. So it's room for discussion and questions. Exactly. Of the, yeah. of the literature. Absolutely. Okay. Um, yeah, well, and of course, you also have for each course uh, usually uh, lectures, or at least uh, for the courses that you uh, started with uh, in the program. And of course, these lectures are with all students starting in our program in a big le lecture hall uh, all together. Mm -hmm. And uh, last year, we started with a group of students of about 260, I believe. So you can imagine that's a big lecture hall, lecture hall with a lot of students together. Uh, but of course, you have the tutorial uh, tutorials as well. So. Um, 
in these, these settings you have, uh, yeah, you uh, get to know your fellow students best, I think. And also in the first semester for the first courses that you're taking, you'll be assigned the same tutorial class for, uh, for the courses that you're taking next to each other. So that gives you the opportunity as well to make friends and to, well, to get connected with people in, your, in this same group. Um, yeah, well, it's just to, to make sure that uh, uh, you also yeah, will get connected to people in such a, well, quite a big program as Absolutely. it is. Um, and uh, in the first semester you get assigned such a schedule, so you do not have options to, to choose your own time slots. But uh, after uh, the program continues, so from the second semester onwards, you do register for courses yourself. So you choose on what, on what time slots you have uh, your tutorials. And also the groups will mix then, so you will we'll have uh, uh, different uh, uh, well, classmates. Exactly. So you get to know really. You, by the by, the end of the, the third semester, you almost know everybody in the course, which is which is nice. Good. Okay. Uh, well, I think this is a perfect moment to answer some of the questions uh, that uh, uh, that you have at this moment. Uh, I saw before one question is also again about studying abroad. It's good to see that you're interested in it, or most of you are coming here to study abroad, but still uh, do wish to uh, study uh, a semester abroad within our program. Um, so uh, the question was whether you can go abroad for electives or for the internship, but the answer is actually both. So if you wish to do your electives as well as your internship abroad, you do have that opportunity or, or either of those. It's up to you how you plan to do that. Um, other questions that we can uh, address? Okay, there's one coming. <laughs> Um, you, well, you are asking questions about the amount of students. Well, I just addressed that. That well, we started this year with about 260 students in the first year, and we do expect well this number or maybe a bit higher for the next year. And uh, as well, maybe it's good to uh, well to tell a bit about the uh, well where all our, f our students are coming from. Sure. You, uh, well, could you maybe tell us a bit about that? Yeah, I mean we uh, I mean obviously from Germany as well and from the Netherlands, but. Um for example, we, we have a lot of people, let's say, from, from Norway, um, from Poland, um, from even far away, from you, have from you have some people from the States, you have some definitely from, from China, mm -hmm. uh, Japan, Korea, we, it's, it's all there. So it's been multiple nationalities um, mixing together, which is really mix, makes it really interesting as a student because you, everyone's new in the city, no one knows the city. Mm -hmm. um, and well, of course, some people do, but the general um, feeling is that everyone wants to excitingly get to know the city and you have all the opportunities with the people, very open-minded people. Um, so this is this makes it for a really good student experience, I'd say. Yeah, so. it was easy making friends. It was, yeah, definitely, definitely. And it's it's so nice to, to get exposed to different cultures and uh, that's that's just wonderful, yeah. So. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, well, indeed, our, our, uh, our international student community in the bachelors is very diverse. So, of course, we have Dutch students. I think they make up a quarter of the total population of our bachelor students in communication science. And then we also have a, quite a big group of German students. I yes. think you can confirm that as exactly, well. Exactly, yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, so maybe up another 20 or 25 percent of uh, the total um, uh, amount of students in our bachelor's program. Uh, but then after this, well, after the, uh, besides this, we have lots of different nationalities. So I think this uh, this September we uh, received um, uh, about 50 different nationalities, students for, with the 50 different nationalities and backgrounds. So indeed, that makes it a lot of fun as well. And well, um, can you co say, well, uh, you're a man, <laughs> a male student. Are you often the majority uh, in the classroom as a male student, or definitely not? It's uh, <laughs> it's uh, it's really it's uh, I think the, the quota was 70 30. Uh, so it's it's okay. mostly female students and uh, a lot less male students. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, yeah, that never really stood anywhere between anyone. So yeah. it's uh, yeah yeah that's, it's, that's you know it's still very the diverse there. Yeah, so definitely yeah yeah, yeah about 70 30, female male. Yes. Um, um, and another question as well, how are the uh, most students doing in the program? Uh, well, as I mentioned, we had uh, we have this entry requirement in the first year for the second year, uh, which means that you ha need to have passed uh, 48 credits out of 60 uh, in order to continue with the second year. 
And last year, about uh, 75, 80 percent reached that limit, so that uh, that benchmark. So, well, the majority of students uh, perform well, and well, they're continuing onwards in our second year of the program. Okay. Um, well, and then about well, your your experience here at the University of Amsterdam. How do you experience was being a student at the University of Amsterdam? What makes it different, special, or challenging sometimes? Well, it's I mean coming to a to a new country and uh, also when coming from Germany, there are of course cultural differences which mm -hmm. uh, you you have to expose yourself to. But um, overall, my experience was very good. It was very pleasant. Um, the course is really well structured. Um, it um, the Usually the courses are so like are designed for that there are no questions, no no surprises coming up, um, and I think the first semester really prepared everyone very well for for the follow up of the course because we, you start with these very basic courses where you get exposed to most of the theories that you'll cover later, um, but also getting into the rhythm of of continuously practicing uh, statistics, um, which will just continue on. So I think the first semester is always a very good benchmark to to find out how well the study fits for you, um, whether you can you can opt with a um, and work with a with a workload um, mm -hmm. and, and the material, um, but and overall I, I personally like biking a lot. So <laughs> this was actually quite nice uh, because Amsterdam is really flat, so you don't have to climb any hills any anywhere with with your bike, which is very nice. Um, For sure. <laughs> you know, so that's uh, you have to get used to the rain. I thought of it. Um, that was uh, that can be sometimes a bit challenging, but. Um, but let's like today it's it's beautiful weather so um, that's also very rewarding and the summers are beautiful here too so. yeah yeah indeed it's yeah. a sunny but chilly day yeah but beautiful uh, winter day today in Amsterdam um, well I'm glad to hear that well that you're uh, uh, positive oh and there's another question uh, that we can cover here maybe the average age of our students uh, well most of our students they start studying after uh, finishing their secondary education, some take a gap year or maybe they have studied somewhere else before. But I think on average it's about 20 years old, I I'd think, so. when yeah. they start in our program. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, well, and yes, you're a very well, happy student, I, uh, for, uh, I, I get uh, from you. Uh, but are there also things that you like less or things that you really had to get used to or were annoying you at um, first? Do you, do you mean in, in the study program? As a, as a as student a, here, as come a, here, as a new student in Amsterdam. Well, it's just um, sometimes um, the getting wrapping your head around the, th the theory and re the reading scientific articles can be very dense in the beginning because mm -hmm. if you're not used to it, it can be like ooh, mm -hmm. uh, a bit overwhelming. Um, but that again also I think with practice and just getting getting used to was um, um, yeah that's that's always really helpful and then after a while it, it gets just gets better mm -hmm. um, so yeah I mean and also sometimes the what, what sometimes can be challenging is the the the, the combination between semester one and two can be mm -hmm. there is no break in between really so ap like it sometimes feels the second semester can start a bit uh, bit slow at least for mm -hmm. me that was my experience but also um, the weather is getting better uh, you get more energy you feel it more vitamin D um, and even that like is yeah it's gonna be fine so. yeah so you've picked up yourself and uh, always yeah like there's always a, sl a slight slump after the exams naturally which everyone yeah. feels but everyone uh, every teacher was always really compassionate about it and said okay we'll we'll get in and uh, we'll just continue working and it was always fine yeah, so we'll get there yeah definitely okay um and about uh, well uh, studying in Amsterdam in the Netherlands in general are the things that you uh, well need to get used to or um, different to most of the international students that are coming here I think um, well there are the 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 general consensus is very international I thought so it's mm -hmm. not I don't I don't it almost doesn't feel like studying necessarily at a Dutch university because the the, the nationalities are so diverse. Mm -hmm. um, I wouldn't have anything particular now in mind where I'd say you have to really, really get used to it. Um, I mean, culture-wise, everyone knows that Dutch people are a bit more direct, but that never created any problem. Um, I mean, I'm from Germany, which is not that far away culturally. Mm -hmm. um, but um, yeah, the, the, the directness is something that people maybe need to adjust to, but it's also very accessible and uh, I'm a big fan of Dutch people too, so it's all it's okay. all good. So they don't need to be afraid of us. No need to be afraid. No. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. Uh, well, 
as we've seen before, you're uh, at this moment, you're most of you are very far away from us. So uh, I can imagine you have not seen our campus before and I have not seen our university before. I've not visited it before. So, yeah, I have uh, some pictures here um, uh, so you can see how our campus looks like. So, uh, for instance, on the left, uh, on the top, or in, on the, in the right, on the top, you see two of the canteens at the university. So, of course, there are some, uh, well, facilities where you can uh, have your lunch or dinner or maybe meet each other uh, to study together or just have a chat. Yep. Um, and uh, in the middle, you see the, the, well, the main entrance of our uh, campus. Uh, we're quite a big campus, and it's called Routers Island Campus, so the Dutch word for it. And that's where we're situated and where you spend most of your time as a student in our program. Uh, university of Amsterdam is, is quite a big university and it has different campuses and it uh, campuses on different locations as well. So our campus, the Roots Island campus, is an eastern part of the city center of Amsterdam. Uh, but we also have a city center campus, campus where uh, humanities uh, programs are situated. Um, we have uh, also a science park in the um, uh, east of the city, where most of the, uh, the well, the maths and the, uh, natural sciences are, uh, programs are situated. Um, and we have our campus, the Rutus Island campus. And uh, our program is situated there within the Faculty of Social and Behavioral Sciences and also the Faculty of Law and the Faculty of Economics and Business is situated on this campus. So that's a lot of students uh, around in one place. Um, and yeah, well, this is uh, how it looks like. So you can see we have a building that's hanging over a canal. So from there you have a typical Am Amsterdam canal view. Um, and we have some patches of green where you, well, in, at least in summertime, can relax, study or uh, meet your friends and so on. So, um, well, Alex, how, how's your experience with the campus so it's, far it's, and the facilities that we offer here? It's beautiful. It's uh, Rutus Island is, is it's brand new, and it's uh, I just it just uh, I remember it was still in construction when I arrived here, mm -hmm. but the main building was was already open, and uh, it's yeah, it's great. I mean, it's it's beautiful when when the sun is out, but also the facilities inside are very um, high ceilings. Uh, the classrooms are always big enough. Um, the lecture halls are pretty, and um, I mean De Bruch, the Bruch the. Um, the cafeteria is very, very pretty. Uh, it, you can be basically situated above a canal, which is very nice. Uh, has enough space for for group po projects to to work um, on, but also you can sit there by yourself, have lunch, and uh, do your readings as well. So, mm -hmm. yeah. And did uh, you always find a nice spot to do your work to, to it, study? It's it's definitely crowded around the exam time, so mm -hmm. sometimes it can be um, a bit harder to find a spot. Um, mm -hmm. But usually. Uh, the library is open longer and extra st study spots are taken care of. So um, during the semester, it's, uh, yeah, it's usually fine. You always get a spot. During exam time, it gets crowded, but that's, that's just normal. So that's just how it start is. Start early. Start early, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> and come early, too. Yes, uh, <laughs> Okay, uh, well, in the picture you see as well an example of one of our lecture rooms, so the big ones in which we have a class with all uh, bachelor students together. Uh, and also uh, some pictures of uh, students in our program, so I think that's a picture on the right top of uh, well, first year students starting last year in our program on the introduction day. And uh, on the left below you see an example of an exam hall, so uh, you, you'll be taking exams in these big, big halls with lots of students together. And often we have well, paper exams, but also often uh, exams that you take on the computer. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, and usually, usually a course ends with uh, taking such an exam. Exactly. Yeah. I just see briefly. I just see a question from Anthony mm -hmm. here about the. Uh, I just saw it flipping by. It, it was about uh, th that I'm yeah I'm a bit older than than the usual student because I'm 27 now um, because I studied music uh, prior to this, uh, and I personally didn't feel like there was a disconnect between me and someone, let's say, who's 20. Um, of course, um, you, you, I have more experience in, let's say, how to run a household, uh, how to live with people together, just because I did it before. Uh, but overall, um, again, everyone's very open-minded um, and never felt any discrepancy between, between me and younger students. So it was all good. Okay. So. Yeah. So yeah, you still feel at ease uh, starting uh, yeah as a bit older student than the average uh, student. I did exactly yeah. So okay. yeah. Uh, I got a, see another question there. Uh, are there any sport teams? So talking about the campus and facilities, uh, uh, what could you maybe explain a bit well what there is on offer with regards yeah. to sports? Absolutely. Uh, university? There's the USC. That's the uh, university's sports. Um, 
uh, organization uh, which offers multiple sports uh, to join, sports team to join, like a tennis team is definitely there, a swimming team. Um, and there are multiple gyms also uh, which you can join, which are um, definitely for a very good price for students. Um, and they're, they're situated all around the city. So there are many sports opportunities to do here in the recreational time. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Definitely. Yeah, and lots of crazy, funny courses that you could take. So let's say maybe you want to explore climbing or uh, uh, sailing or uh, well, whatever sports you can think exactly. of. I think you can take a course uh, in the university sports center. So indeed, there is uh, a lot to offer uh, with regards to sports by the university as well. Um, OK, I'll move on to uh, well, the next subject of our webinar, uh, that's more regarding the practical matters. So I see as well that you have some questions about maybe the application or housing and so on. So that's what we'll uh, continue with now. So maybe uh, you're uh, interested, you're inspired and you want to uh, enter our program. So of course you'll need to apply. And I'll give you a brief overview of the steps that you need to take in order to apply for our program. Um, so for this, I'll definitely refer you back to our website. So um, you can see there as well the option application and admission. So if you click there and read all the information, you find hopefully everything that you need to know in order to apply. If not, of course, there's uh, an FAQ there as well. Uh, so maybe uh, you can find the answer there. And of course, you could always contact us as well to, uh, well, to ask your questions. So uh, the deadline for application for a start this September is uh, for non-EU students, so students from outside of the EU is the 1st of April and we have uh, the 1st of May as a deadline for uh, EU students and Dutch students. Uh, so yeah, application is open right now. Um, I do assume that most of you have an international prior education, so uh, you have uh, completed your secondary education outside of the Netherlands. So um, I would assume that you would click on that option to see what steps that you need to take because it does differ the actions that you need to take for application with a non-Dutch or a Dutch prior education. Uh, first of all, of course, check the entry requirements. Those are listed on our website. Uh, for sure, your secondary education needs to be at an equivalent level as our uh, Dutch pre-university education. We call that a VWO, VWO. That's the, the level that we're looking for. So it needs to be equal to that. And that will be evaluated, of course, after you applied. Uh, besides that, we also have an English language requirement. So a program is complete in, completely in English. Uh, you'll need to be uh, sufficient uh, in the English language. So we ask a proof for that as well. Uh, we uh, have listed uh, the English language requirements on our websites. Uh, so we ask for uh, English language tests. So for instance, the IELTS, the TOEFL or Cambridge test. And uh, the minimum requirements for the test course are listed on our website. So I'll refer you uh, f to the website for that, uh, for details on that. And also there we have listed several degrees, secondary education degrees that we have listed um, uh, for which we can give an exemption for that English language test. So maybe your uh, degree is on that list, so please take a look. Um, the first step that you need to take in, um, to apply for a program is that you need to submit an enrollment application um, in StudyLink. And StudyLink is our online portal in the Netherlands to uh, register for higher education in the Netherlands. So that's the first step that you need to take. And after that, uh, well, you'll be sent your UvaNet ID, so actually your student number and password through which you can log in our, in our uh, university application system. And there you need to um, well, uh, submit an online form. Of course, we'll ask some details from, from you about you, where you're from and what education you have taken beforehand. Uh, and also you need to upload um, some documents, so uh, proof of the secondary education that you uh, uh, well, have obtained. So even if you have not obtained your diploma yet, you can apply. We, at this stage, we didn't, and then ask your uh, predicted grades. And uh, of course, you need to as well upload a proof of um, your English language proficiency. So an English language test. Um, besides that, we also ask from you a, a statement of motivation. So 
in which you explain why you want to st uh, start studying communication science and also why here in Amsterdam at our university. So we want to hear uh, your motivation for our program. And besides that, you need to add a CV to that and also a letter of reference so that someone maybe your mentor or tutor of, of your high school who knows your academic qualities and uh, well can describe these to us. Um, so once you have submitted your application, well you, of course you need to wait a bit, we need to process your, uh, your application. Um, with, that can take up to six to eight weeks and after that, uh, well hopefully we'll give you a conditional offer in our program and we ask you to accept or decline and once you accept, you uh, will send you all the relevant information that you need in order to enroll in our program. And a next step that you need to take at that stage is that we invite you to participate in the um, online program fit. So below on this slide you can see EVA matching for international students. Um, we call that for communication science the online program fit, um, which is ac actually a program of about 10 days in which you part need to participate as part of the application process uh, in, well, in the first two courses that you'll be taking in our program. Uh, you'll uh, watch online lectures, you uh, make an uh, do an assignment, you take a test at the end of those 10 days and ba on the basis of that, of the assignments and the tests you've taken, we'll give you advice. So whether this program is indeed the right fit for, uh, well, to uh, the interest that you have, the abilities that you have. Um, and on the basis of that, the positive or negative advice, you decide yourself whether you want, want to proceed with the enrollment for a program. So it's a mandatory part of the program, so uh, this, these steps you need to follow. Um, okay, so that's about the, well, the practical matters for the application, but uh, for sure, I'll, yeah, I want to refer you to our website because there is uh, the application process described in much detail. And I think that, the, yeah, well, of course, uh, previous education back backgrounds can differ among you. So please read uh, and uh, make the conclusions for, uh, for yourself. And of course, ask, uh, ask us uh, questions uh, through email or later on in the chat if you do have them still. Um, well, of course, when you uh, maybe, hopefully, we invite you to our program and give you the offer. Uh, and uh, also we'll send you a lot of information, uh, uh, things that you need to prepare in order to, uh, uh, well, uh, to be a student here at the University of Amsterdam. So lots of practical matters to prepare. And an uh, important thing, of course, is housing. So uh, I would advise you to, um, uh, so, well, to read about the housing information, uh, housing in Amsterdam, um, well, a long time beforehand. So, coming here just to be sure that you yeah you know what to do in order to find proper housing um, and on our website of the university so from the top menu you can click towards the practical matters and uh, as well for, uh, click towards the housing option uh, and also other practical matters such as visas so maybe you, if you're coming from outside of you eu you'll also be invited to apply for a visa uh, but also information about insurance living in amsterdam living expenses uh, that you might expect uh, yeah, all kinds of practical information that you need as an international student studying here in Amsterdam. Um, but housing, of course, is a practical, uh, a, a important matter as well. Um, University of Amsterdam does provide international students uh, with housing, so you may you can apply for housing as an international student uh, coming to study in our program, and uh, I would advise you to do so as well uh, if you do not have a place yet to stay. Um, but do note that uh, when you uh, get an offer for a room, it's for a maximum of one year. So for sure, count on that you need to uh, look for housing for the second and third year that you're studying with us uh, for yourself. And as well, uh, fortunately, applying for housing does not guarantee a room through the university. So uh, do make sure that besides applying for housing through the uh, UVA, also uh, orientate yourself towards the private market in Amsterdam. Uh, and on the website um, uh, that, that I show here, you'll find house information on housing through the university, but also lots of practical tips that might be useful when you uh, want to orientate towards uh, the housing market in Amsterdam, so the private housing market. 
Um, Alex, how is your housing situation in Amsterdam? I was uh, I got very lucky um, mm -hmm. because I also I applied through Duvo. That's one of the housing companies, mm -hmm. um, and I immediately got a room. Um, also, I, I I was looking for a room which was unfurnished because um, I was beforehand living already uh, in a shared flat, so I had all the I had a bed and I didn't need to um, yeah I didn't need to really move far away from Germany. You can mm -hmm. just take a transporter. Um, to do it. So that option was really nice and I was just lucky and I have an unlimited contract as long as I study from Duo. Uh, I have 25 square meters, which is also very nice uh, and located in uh, Amsterdam Nord at the NDSM, which is a fun fun part of the city as well. So, mm -hmm. Yeah, so, so far yeah. I was uh, lucky, but also friends of friends of mine are, they got uh, two other housing uh, locations in Südost, I think, and also in Diemen. Um, mm -hmm. There are the containers, basically, which are I think limited to one year or one semester. I think it's I think it was one year, uh, which is a fantastic vantage point as well. Just to, especially if you're coming from a different continent, um, it's really good to have just the starting points uh, to be situated here for a year at least, um, and then you get to know other students who are also looking for an apartment. Maybe make some friends, and the the housing market opens way more up once you're actually here. Mm -hmm. So um, just get here, find a room first in the beginning. Try to, yeah, try to manage the studies, and the housing will come as well. So mm -hmm. pretty, yeah. And have your uh, your friends that got uh, one year housing in the first year? Did they manage to find uh, housing for the second year after that as well? Most they, of them, or did they, they have did. trouble finding housing? Uh, it's it's difficult because the housing the, the demand is really high. But after all, all all people are situated now. Find uh, mm -hmm. find a solution for for any any housing problems, so and now it's good. Okay. So yeah. That's good to hear. Okay, uh, well, I got here an overview of locations that uh, of, of UVA housing options. So uh, there, are, uh, as you can see, the dark blue part is the city center of Amsterdam, and the light blue is well the the more the part around the city center. Uh, and most of uh, the UVA housing locations are not situated in the city center, but um, outside of the city center. So if you're apply, applying for housing, do count on that uh, you probably need about 20 to, to 30 minutes traveling to our campus. Uh, but all locations do have uh, good public transport connections, so there will not be, be a problem. And of course, Getting a bike. if you get a bike, maybe it'll be uh, even faster. Sure. Um, here I have a short overview of the expenses that you might expect as a student in Amsterdam. So this excludes the tuition fee, the tuition fee rates you find on, the, on the, our website as well, so I refer you to that for that. Uh, but do count on that for accommodation, maybe you need for, uh, an amount ranging from 400 to 600 euros a month. Um, also if you need to apply for a visa, uh, do count on that, that you need to pay um, a one-time fee. Um, that's uh, over 300 euros and also of course condom cost that you'll have for insurance uh, well general living expenses of course your groceries and activities that you would like to undertake uh, public transport and uh, of course as well books that you need for your studies um, so um, make sure to, uh, to have a budget ready before coming here and that you have sufficient funds to finance your uh, studies. If you're applying for a visa, that's also a requirement that you need to show that you have sufficient funds on your bank account to finance your studies. So uh, do uh, study what you need uh, in order to finance studying here. Okay, are there any other questions so far? Okay. Not for this moment, not about this part. I think we uh, did address most of the topics. Okay. So, well, maybe after those three years, you, uh, yeah, well, you completed the program, uh, hopefully, and uh, maybe this could be you on stage, well, in uh, receiving your uh, bachelor's degree, your bachelor of science. Uh, most of our students, when they uh, receive their uh, bachelor's degree in the Netherlands, they continue with a master's degree. And within communication science, you could choose one of those four tracks that we mentioned before to specialize, specialize yourself uh, in communication science. Um, and uh, most of them enter the job market with a master's degree as well after they've obtained their bachelor's degree. Um, yeah, and well, there are several fields 
that uh, our graduates are working in. So we we have noticed that uh, our graduates end up in a very broad range of uh, jobs. So I've listed a few examples here. Um, you can imagine that maybe you'll uh, want to work for a media company. So uh, it could be that you end up as a producer for a TV company or maybe as a journalist or an editor for a newspaper, magazine, online media, uh, TV, etc. So working uh, for um, a media company. But as well, it might be possible that you end up working for a communication department of a non-media company. So let's say a big company as Heineken ING in Amsterdam, they have communication departments and they need communication specialists. So maybe that could be uh, uh, something that you uh, wish to work for as well as a communication specialist. Um, also, it could be maybe that you want to specialize in advertising and work for an agency that produces or delivers these kind of services to other companies, or maybe start your own business. Maybe exactly. uh, Alex will do that later on. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, uh, of course, it might be possible as well that you're triggered by the research that you are uh, doing in our in our studies and you want to be a researcher within the field of communication science. Maybe get a PhD degree or work as an assistant professor in our program, a lecturer in our program later on. So. These could be, could be a possible prospects after graduation. Um, you find on our website as well some information about career prospects you see there as well. Uh, and you can also see some videos of our alumni, alumni um, well, busy on uh, doing their job after graduating. So maybe they'll give you a, pr a proper view as well of the possibilities after studying communication science. Um, if you have further questions, uh, well, we'll be there in the chat uh, a few minutes after the session, so we'll try to answer all of your questions. And of course, if we haven't been able to answer them, uh, we'll make sure to send them to you by email afterwards. Uh, but uh, if there are any questions remaining, please do contact us. You'll find our contact details on our website. Um, and maybe, uh, yeah, we'll meet you at, the, uh, at one of the open days that we're still ha having in the coming uh, months. Well, every semester we do have several opportunities, of course, as well here in Amsterdam for you to uh, share information about the program. Um, so here's the link of the website. Take a look at the, at the website for more information. So by now we've reached the end of the webinar already. So I really hope that you enjoyed it and you really got the information that you need, the answers to your questions, and hopefully maybe you got inspired and we'll uh, meet again then in Amsterdam, maybe this September or next year. So, uh, well, good luck with your orientation. And on that note, I would like to say as well, tot ziens. So thank you. Auf Wiedersehen.